Hello and welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. In this video, we're going to continue considering the subject of three-phase electricity. Now, in this video and in the subsequent video, we're going to look at loads that are connected in both star and delta. So you may have heard those expressions before in connection with three-phase, and they describe the two ways that we can connect up loads into a three-phase system. More specifically, in this video, we're going to define and describe the different voltages and the different currents that you find in three-phase systems, and we're going to have a look at the relationships between those voltages and between those currents. So in this video, we're going to specifically look at a star-connected load. And if we just have a look at the rig that I've created behind us here, you can see that we've got three loads connected. Now, we're getting familiar with the idea that we can use resistors to represent loads. And in this case, this could be viewed as three heating loads. We could also start to consider this being the three windings of a three-phase motor or perhaps the three windings of a three-phase transformer. These are all different ways that we can consider that. It gets a little bit more complicated when we start considering those. But the point is we've got three loads and they're connected to each other in star. Now, how do we know this is a star connection? Well, each load has two connections to it, electrically speaking. So you can see that there's two connections there and there and two connections there and there. One of those connections is connected to a supply line. So you can see here, this one is connected to the supply line coming along the bottom, and this one is connected to this supply line here. And the other end of each one of these loads is connected to each other, and then to the neutral conductor. And that's what makes it a star connection. As you'll see in the next video, the delta connection looks very different. Now, it's important to bear in mind that when we look at a star-connected load, we lay it out like this graphically, and I've laid this out like this as a demonstration piece. But actually, in reality, the three loads don't necessarily have to sit 120 degrees apart physically like they are here. If you look inside the windings of a transformer, you won't see the windings arrayed like this. When we had three heaters or three lamps plugged in, to our three-phase system in a previous video, they weren't laid out like this, but it does help us just to see the relationships between the voltages and the currents. So let's start thinking about the voltages and the currents inside these and the relationship between them. Now in a three-phase system, there are two kinds of voltage that we're interested in. There's what we call the line voltage, and there is what we call the phase voltage. Now what we're going to do is we're going to give these definitions that make them work for a star connected load and for a delta connected load. So let's think about that first of all. What is the line voltage? Well, line voltage in a three phase system is the voltage that can be measured between any two supply lines. So we might measure it between L1 and L2, as we've got here. We might measure it between L1 and L3 or we might measure it between L2 and L3. Those are the three different ways that we can measure line voltage in a three-phase system. Now, some of you may be watching this video and thinking, ah, now I know how he's gonna define phase voltage. The way I define phase voltage, it might seem a little bit odd to start with, but actually it helps us to understand how the same definition applies to star and delta. Because the way I define uh, the phase voltage is it is the voltage measured across the load. So it's the voltage across the load. Now in a star connected system, that's basically the same as measuring between any one of the lines and the neutral conductor. You can see that measuring between here and here will give us exactly the same value as measuring between here and here. So we'll think of phase voltage as being the voltage across the load. Now let's have a think about our line and phase current. So there we've got our two different kinds of current. We've got line current and we've got phase current. Now at first glance, the definitions that I'm about to give here might seem pretty absurd for a star connected load. You can see that they're gonna be really useful when we get to the delta connected load. So the line current is the current flowing through the supply line to the load. So it is the uh, current flowing through the supply line. The phase current, the other kind of current in a three-phase system, is the current that's actually flowing through the load. Now, what I've done on this rig is I've built in these little loops in the cable so that we can measure what they are. And actually, this really helps to demonstrate very easily what the relationship's going to be between the line current and the phase current in a star-connected system. So here we've got, we'll be able to measure our line current 
and here we'll be able to measure the current that's flowing through the load, the phase current. So what we're going to do now is we're going to power up our star connected load, we're going to measure the voltages, we're going to measure the currents and then we're going to show the mathematical relationships between those voltages and currents. So what we're going to do now is we're going to connect up our star connected load to a three phase supply which is just off screen here. Now we're working under controlled conditions but obviously a three phase system is even more dangerous than a single phase system which is already pretty lethal. So please do not attempt to repeat this experiment in your own time. So what we're going to do, we'll power up. So we've turned that on now, there's now electricity flowing into our three phase load. And what we're going to do is we're going to, first of all, measure the line voltage. So that is the voltage between any two supply lines. I'm going to pick L1 and L2, and I'm going to measure the voltage between those. So using my beautiful Mega AVO 835, I'm going to set that to measure voltage. Make sure that it's on AC, and then we're going to measure across here. Now I'm using these uh, rather lovely Vargo connectors to make sure that I am absolutely safe here. I'm going to put these on at roughly the same time so I don't have a live end waggling around. And then you can see that the voltage that we're measuring here is 426... 426.3 volts we've got there. So 426.3 volts. So that is our line voltage for this system that we've got connected up. So what we're going to do now is we're going to measure our phase voltage and we're going to see what that is. So remember, phase voltage is the voltage across the load. So in this case, we're just going to connect up across here. So if I can just get a connection onto here and a connection onto here in a safe fashion, you can see there we've got 246.8 volts. 246.8 volts. So Hopefully, those values are vaguely familiar to you because, of course, our nominal voltages in the UK, we say that three phase is 400 volts and we say that single phase is 230 volts. So we had those values pretty close. What we're going to do now is we're going to nip across to the whiteboard and we're going to have a look at how those two voltages are related to each other and what the kind of the number is that connects them. So you can see on the screen here, we've got our three phase connected load. We've got our three resistors that are connected in star with each other. And we've got various voltages and currents that we're going to be measuring. Now, the first value that we measured was the line voltage, which was between L1 and L2 and measured 426.3 volts. So we measured that at 426.3 volts. And then when we measured our phase voltage, it came out at 200 and 46.8 volts. So how are these two numbers related to each other? Well, when we look at these two numbers, there is a relationship between them, but it's not immediately obvious. We need a number that connects these two together. And that number is really important in three phase systems. And it is the square root of three, the square root of three. So if we want to figure out what the relationship is between these, we look at it in this way. We say that the line voltage, VL, is equal to the phase voltage, VP, multiplied by the square root of 3. Now this number, the square root of 3, will often be written down as 1.73, 1.732, which is an approximation of this value. Root 3 is a much more accurate value to use, and if you have a scientific calculator, it's a very, very easy one to use. So let's put our numbers in and see if this uh, holds true. So we'll put in our values. So we've got first of all 246.8 uh, for our phase voltage and we're going to times that by the square root of 3. So let's bring up our Casio FX85 GT Plus and we'll have a look at what that calculation comes out at. So let's do our calculation now. We've got 246 and we're going to times that by the square root of 3. So here's our square root button and then we put a 3 underneath there. It's normally best to do it in this order because if you put the root 3 in first sometimes you end up putting this multiply under the square root which throws us off completely. So try and remember that as a tip times root 3 is the second value. Hit the equals button and we come out with 427.47 which is very very close to the 426.3 volts 
that we were hoping to get. So we can see that the relationship between those two numbers holds true. That is a really, really important thing to bear in mind. This formula here is the one that we want to take into our exams in our minds. VL is equal to VP times root 3 for a star connected load. So now we've seen the relationship between line voltage and phase voltage in a three phase system. We're going to have a look at the relationship between line current and phase current in a star connected system. So now we've looked at the relationship between line voltage and phase voltage in a star connected three phase system. We're going to have a look at the line current and the phase current in a star connected three phase system and see what that relationship is. So for this I'm going to use my rather lovely DCM 305E leakage clamp. Now this device is absolutely fantastic for measuring earth leakage in an installation. It measures very very low current very accurately and that low current measurement is going to come in super helpful now because we're going to be able to measure the small amounts of current that are flowing into my three phase rig here. So I'm going to first of all measure my line current. So that's the current flowing through the supply line. So I'm going to clip my DCM 305E on here and measure that. And you can see that we've got there 74.1 milliamps or 74 milliamps that's settled down that. So that's quite nice. Now, it might seem a little bit mad to check what the phase current is going to be here because again if you think about this logically any current flowing through this supply line here must just flow down here through our star connected load here and out of the system again so therefore what value do you expect we'll get here well let's have a look so we've got amazingly 74 milliamps again so this is reading 74.2. If we let that settle down, it will probably come out at 74 again. So you can see there that the phase current and the line current are actually exactly the same value inside a star connected load. That might seem like an obvious thing to say, but understanding that now will help us to gain a deeper understanding of how our delta connected load looks like in the next video. So just for the sake of completeness, we'll go over to the whiteboard and we'll add that relationship on so that we can see our relationships very clearly. So we took our measurements for the line current and the phase current. So the line current was 74 milliamps and we found that the phase current was also 74 milliamps. Uh, just about so we can see there very simply that these two values are the same and that makes sense because any current flowing down This line conductor into the load must also flow through the load So it seems pretty obvious to state it at this point, but we'll write it down for the fullness of the situation We've got AL is equal to IP in a star connected system the line current and the phase current are exactly the same. So there's our second key formula to take away from this video. IL is equal to IP in a star connected load. So for your exam, just some tips here that will come in really helpful. You might be shown a drawing of a star connected load that looks something like this with various ammeters and voltmeters connected to it. You need to be able to identify whether those ammeters are measuring line current, phase current, line voltage or phase voltage. So if you remember the definitions that we mentioned earlier on in the video, that will really help you with that. And you also need to remember the relationships. You may be given a value of line voltage and asked to calculate the phase voltage. And that all important number of the square root of three is the number that relates them together. The way I always think about this is if I can remember my line voltage, which is 400 volts, we state that at. And if I can remember my single phase voltage, which is 230 volts, that's my phase voltage, I can kind of get the relationship between those two by doing 400 divided by 230. That'll give you about 1.73. So then you've just got to think, well, if I'm given a line voltage, do I want the phase voltage to be bigger or smaller? Obviously, we want it to be smaller. Therefore, you would divide by that 1.73 or the square root of three if you want to be a little bit more accurate. And of course, in the star connected system, because we've got two different voltages, that kind of means that the two currents must be the same. So if you're given a value of line current for a star connected load, you can very, very easily figure out that the phase current will be exactly the same. Thank you very much for watching.